Hey, what's up, guys? Keeping a real fishing here. You know, as light as this canoe is, um, this is the Sports Pal. I got a pretty comprehensive review on that. It only comes in at 58 pounds. And uh, good to throw on the shoulder for some of the shorter access, uh, accessing the small lakes, which is something I really, really like doing. So today we're out here, myself and buddy Frank, and we're, we're really hiking it in. A uh, mile, mile and a half or more. And so just what I'd like to show you is this um, Seattle Sports Nemo Extremo. And as you can see, I'm just pulling the boat right now and we have it uh, loaded <laughs> with a lot of gear. Only thing we didn't take today was the trolling motor and the battery. Although this holds 250 pounds, so probably could have got away with it, but it was coming up on the weight threshold. But it's a good deal, guys. You have a small craft, canoe, or uh, kayak, and uh, you want to get you know, into those places that are really tucked away, places that not too many people get a line in. These are the types of things to consider. So let me just show you. I'm sure if you can grab that. So I was just pulling it, and uh, now Frank's there, and we've been on this trail already for about 15 minutes. Got a little ways to go here before we get to the water. And uh, that's it, you're looking at a 14 foot boat. You can see all the stuff we got in there, large tackle bags, full gear. The unit uh, straps on the side here. Got a strap on that side and a strap on this side. And I'll just take you underneath. You see what's going on. I like this one here. Uh, I just picked it up, but I went with the Extremo because those tires are uh, they are not pneumatic, or basically they can't go flat on you. They have a little bit of resilience, but there's not actually a tube. They can't pop. And so, you, you know, you just don't know on any given trail how bad it's going to be. And uh, it's just it's a pain, right, to get a flat. If you're a half mile, a mile out, you don't want to deal with that. So. Um, makes sense to me. I, I would recommend the one with the non-inflatable tires. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Very straightforward. Just a nice tool to give you access to those remote bodies of water. Uh, we're hoping to get a huge fall bass today, doing the swim bait fishing thing. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, guys, Nemo Extremo. Just take it underneath one more time. It's a good deal. Again, holds about 250 pounds. And that's it. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Alright guys, I'm going to show you the next step here. Uh, just doing that Nemo Extremo review. It's kind of interesting, we're really giving it our all here today. This is a heck of a hike, we've been hiking in for about 40 minutes just to get to this little cut right here. It's our closest access point. So uh, this is the stuff that I love, man, is, is finding these little hole in the walls that there's no good access to. Uh, you, you do see the uh, kind of the fire road here, but these are uh, gated off. You can't get a vehicle down. So it's early, well, not early anymore, but I guess just uh, trying to capture the excitement. It's stuff like this that, uh, at least mentally, you feel holds a lot of promise. There's no good shoreline access. You got to really work to get in here. Uh, we got about a 60 acre little pond, lake, however you classify it. And uh, yeah, so we're going to drag her down and we're going to combine um, determination, getting access, with uh, some big swim baits here in the, the kind of the end of fall and uh, just optimistic. This is kind of that, that grand recipe for a spectacular fish. We'll see how it plays out. Never been here before actually, so we'll see what happens. What do you say, Frank? I'm ready to rock. He's ready to rock. rock. Alright, big rods are ready to go. I'm just taking out the last of this stuff. I'm going to manhandle this thing down there. And uh, see what happens, guys. Hoping for the best. Alright, everybody. We just wrapped up for the day and uh, kind of re reverse order of operations here. I want to show you the actual uh, trolley or the cart and we just took all of our stuff out and I'm just showing you how I have it strapped up. There's probably a couple different ways you could do it. You could run them over the top here but just due to the length of my straps I wasn't able to go like that. I had to come underneath these bars here. 
you see I just wrapped it underneath there, around there, and up underneath these things. Basically, uh, you know, you just want compression between the canoe and the uh, foam uh, mount that it's resting on. So you just kind of want to squeeze all this together. That's pretty much it. So uh, I'm just going to undo this here and show you the actual cart. Do this, there we go. You definitely need the straps. We had quite a bit of weight on it, but unless you're on all but the absolute smoothest of roads, it's gonna creep and, and jump and bounce around as you hit things. So you definitely wanna strap it down pretty good. Okay, that's it, we're free of the straps. And uh, right now, the way I had it, and I think probably the easiest way to pull it, is to put the cart right in the middle. I don't have it, I guess, perfect, but even if it's not perfectly in the middle, then between all the stuff we had in it, you can balance it. So we had, I guess, a little bit more towards this end to compensate for the fact that this is acting like a fulcrum that this wasn't perfectly in the middle. But you don't have to go crazy. You just want to kind of have it generally in the middle and that's going to make it easier to carry. You know, you don't want to obviously be too front heavy or too back heavy. It's going to make it harder for you to, uh, to compensate. So, uh, yeah, we had it there and then we just kind of leveled it out until when we picked it up it was just almost featherweight to pick up because the balance point was, was perfect. And uh, now, really I could do this on either end, but since the front's down what you're going to want to do is you just pick up the canoe and use that front point as just a, a pivot. Just pivot it over, put it down, and mounting is kind of the same thing. Uh, you just kind of pick it up and bring it over and drop it on top of the cart. They have a kickstand built in that allows this, this to stay put, so this guy right here. The only thing I didn't like about this, I really don't like, it's it's kind of a, a glaring oversight, is that there's nothing that keeps this kickstand up aside from a little bit of tension in here, but this is my first time using it and this already relinquished that tension. So as you're going along, this thing is shaking, shaking, shaking to the point that it goes down. And then any rock that you hit, you can see how low that is at that point, <laughs> any rock that you hit gets caught on the kickstand and you can see that as evidence of all that scarring right there. So it would be nice if they had something so as when you pull this up, you know, you have it up. Now you can see you have ample ground clearance. All right, you have probably about 10 inches of ground clearance. Um, it'd just be nice if something kept it in place there. But all you really need, and all I'm going to do is just get a, a bungee cord and put a bungee from here to here. This way it's just pulling it and keeping it up. Uh, you can see I did have a little bit of creep. This canoe has a keel on the bottom. It has like a little, probably about a one inch uh, metal, uh, well, it's a keel. <laughs> and these weren't high enough. So the keel was rubbing into here. That should not be happening. That was not good. So basically I need more distance between this bar and where the canoe is resting. So actually you could see I supplemented it. I had the original foam. I put on another layer, and I probably need another layer or two to keep that keel from rubbing. So keep that in mind if you have a craft with one. Um, that you just have to kind of raise it up from its uh, from from this foam here because they just don't give you enough. But that's pretty much it, guys. Aside from that, this whole thing only weighs about I think they said like seven pounds. It's very very lightweight. It's aluminum. Um, these guys here break down really easy. You just have some cotter pins. You just flip them over, pull them out, and then the wheels come off. You do the same thing on the other side, and then you just have these little push pins here, which under a little bit of pressure now, just because we had all the weight of the boat on it, but you push in this one, you push in this one, and then these two pieces will separate, which you don't have to do, but if for some reason you want it to be even more compact, you could do that. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. The uh, Seattle, right, Seattle Sports. For whatever reason, they have Paddle Boy on there. Oh yeah, there it is, by Seattle Sports. And that's the Nemo Extremo. Overall, it's pretty nice. Um, 
the ruggedness that you see here is not any fault of the cart, it's just the fact that this particular canoe has a keel. And I guess they could improve it by fixing the kickstand and also making these higher uh, to compensate for those crafts that do have that. But otherwise, uh, pretty happy. Uh, we had a 40 minute walk, a mile and a half, two miles, each way we just did, and it was beautiful. It worked great, so, so that's it guys. It's a nice little uh, carrier for your canoe or kayak.